My grandfather spent thousands of hours in his dusty shed, slowly wood-burning lines into cypress, creating exact replicas of things he saw in nature. Ducks, crawfish, bass, butterflies, magnolia. He also spent ample hours learning how to make his own fly baits, testing his balance standing in a pea robe, or adjusting his catfish traps by an inch depending on the flood stage that season. All he had was time. He talked very little, did a whole lot. For a long, long time, I tended towards the talk a whole lot, do very little. So it should have been no surprise that when I announced my intent to learn the family gumbo recipe, my grandmother looked me in the eyes and said, you're not ready. Each year around Thanksgiving, this is what she would say. She never gave a reason, but she repeated those words every year. My grandmother's name is Rita Mazerang, and she too was cut from the patient cloth like my grandfather. She remembers poor. She remembers taking time to plant the seeds right, because if you messed up the crops, no food for winter. It's no wonder she looked me up and down each year, waiting for the year when she might decide to teach me how to make my grandfather's gumbo. Today, I realized that the day she said I was ready was right around the time I started doing more and talking less, when I spent less time exalting my opinion and more time doing heavy lifting. And it really came, I think, when she knew I learned the hard way that you are who you are when no one is looking. It's what you do then that counts. Some lessons take a long time to accept.